Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Borderwise, and welcome to a surprise let's build in which I am recycling, well, not recycling, a uh, showing off uh, the complete build of the uh, craft that I made for uh, my how to build big tutorial because I've got all the footage anyway. And so, for those of you who are curious to see what exactly went into this giant ass build, here it is. And it is at four times speed uh, because it is a lot of footage. It was originally something like four or five hours. Uh, I did unfortunately lose some footage and I'm not sure uh, how that happened. Uh, either I forgot to hit the record button at some point or uh, more likely OBS just uh, had, a little temp had a little temper tantrum and just decided not to record half of one of the sessions. So this is multiple sessions. I did not record this all at once. Because uh, that is not good uh, for your health and safety or sanity. So yeah, um, as tends to be the case uh, with... It's not a hard and fast general rule, but it's often a good idea to start with whatever weapon systems uh, you're going to put on the thing. Uh, we're starting with the main gun. So uh, the finished uh, craft, which still doesn't have a name by the way, I'm considering just calling it the Bigasaurus. Uh, because I'm just not good at naming things recently. Just... I don't know. I'm kind of defaulting to names which just act like, you know, descriptions. And so, yeah, we are starting with um, just some four connection Tetris. I have made a video on that uh, before. It's, um, it's slightly different from the way I showed uh, in the video uh, where I talked about this, uh, because I started in the middle, had a prefab, and then you just, you uh, kind of stitch it together like so. Yeah, so this build, uh, I did try new things in this build. Um, I didn't want to entirely just um, uh, stick with stuff I already knew and stuff I already knew worked. Um, one of the main ways I'm definitely sticking with uh, things I know work is the shell type uh, with this. Uh, you might have caught a glimpse of it earlier. It is a maximum length, 8 meter long, uh, AP frag semi penetrator. So. Basically, is a big shell, 400 millimeter, eight meters long, uh, that whizzes through the water and punches holes and things. And it's very nice, and it works uh, very consistently, particularly in uh, against late game a godly craft. Uh, there's not an awful lot that can uh, just evade or withstand this. It's uh, quite quite useful, quite versatile, and um, that's how APS is really good generally, is because it's just a very versatile weapon system. Which is why, I'm sure many people will agree, it is the best weapon system. In fact, I'm starting to, um, considering that whenever I make something that only is armed with crams or lasers or something like that, or simple weapons, I'm always, like, start I'm starting to get to the point where I'm thinking, like, okay, so if something doesn't have an advanced cannon on it, it's not a finished build. I'm starting to get to that point. So, yeah, just, that might be a nice, uh building rule for me to experiment with is like everything must have an advanced cannon of some kind because they can always do something uh, that does mean that uh, it'll always get expensive which is annoying uh, but yeah just I, it, actually that's not a bad idea it's just you know just always uh, have uh, just a, it doesn't ma even matter how big it is so long as it can do something it's just always have a little backup super cavitation APS somewhere on a craft so it can uh, do stuff. That might be a good idea. Man, I just want to make a canoe now <laughs> that just has uh, one giant cram cannon and then just a, a whole lot of um, super cavitation uh, AP guns uh, that just kind of do a whole bunch of things at once. That'd be great. Uh, but talking more about the build here, one of the great things about this four connection Tetris is that um, it leaves room uh, for stuff uh, like uh, basically everything you need in advanced cannon. Uh, there's lots of coolers, the inputs, the recoil absorbers in particular, and uh, works great with railguns. So you would have noticed um, on the sides of it. Ooh, this is a handy trick to know. Is um, even if you don't usually have a warning highlighting on, it helps to turn it on just uh, occasionally, just to see if you've uh, got everything right, if everything's connected. But yeah, back to what I was saying. Um, Damn it! what was I saying? Oh yeah, so uh, you would have noticed the kind of uh, cooling uh, columns uh, just in the uh, spared gaps that I have uh, around this turret. Uh, that's great for railgun charges if you're making a railgun. 
And now what we're doing is that this is going to be a nice big pancake turret. And so what that means is that we got to figure out how big exactly the uh, the pancake is going to be because it's got to completely cover uh, the turret well itself and basically needs to have no gaps. Also, 103 rounds uh, per minute for an 8 meter long 400 mm shell, that is a lot of Dhaka, and I like it. And of course we've got a heavy armor layer here just to uh, keep the stuff extra safe. The stuff, <laughs> uh, That's what I call gun components now, I call it stuff. So yeah, this is, um, I don't know, I'm, like, I'm not completely sold on the idea of using heavy armor in this way, but if you're going to build a necklace turret, um, this seems to work pretty darn well. Um, just to keeping it safe. I haven't tested this thing a hell of a lot. I really, uh, by the way, I am, people have said like they'd like to see this thing go up against things like the Stalslung and the other battleships that I've built. And hell yeah, I am planning to do that, and certainly going to test this thing against the Meg. Um, yeah, I have not tested this thing against the Megalodon yet. Um, I have no idea how that's going to go. I really don't have any idea how that's going to go. And so now, uh, what are we doing? So here is where we use cunning use of slopes, uh, just to get some good kinetic armoring in there, because slopes take reduced uh, kinetic damage. And then, for those of you who really like your slopes, uh, I am going to fill mo- uh, This thing does get filled with poles. Uh, just a uh, spamming uh, metal poles, uh, because that's uh, great for... Uh, what do we call it? That's just, good, that's just good armor filler, really. Like, I'm really sold on poles. I am... <laughs> I am... <laughs> uh, darn it, I was trying to come up with wordplay with sold and poles, but they sound too similar. Okay, and the other thing that I'm really getting fond of doing, um, well, I've been, I mean, I've been fond of doing this for ages, but just hiding detection systems inside turrets just works so well. It means that the uh, craft is much, much harder to blind, because if you look at this, um, this isn't even the, finish, uh, the finished result, but these cameras are behind so many layers of material that basically, before they get destroyed, the entire turret gets destroyed. So, yeah. Yeah, it's um, very nice. I like big turret gaps. I don't know, I just, I just kind of do. It seems to work well with just my building style. And that is the thing, is like, uh, you always gotta, you always gotta think like what works with your building style in particular, because it's not hard and fast rules and from the depths, it's like, uh, what works well for somebody else, um, might not work for you simply because their play style is different from yours. And there's some more poles in there. Delicious, uh, crunchy poles. And yeah, so the idea is, is that this thing is usually getting shot at from the front because it's a turret. It points, uh, it points at things. And yeah, and lots of, uh, lots of, man, if portholes get patched out or um, if they get uh, patched so cameras can't see through them, my goodness. Um, that'll be... Uh, That'll be a very sad day for me, because I'll end up with a lot of turrets that need to be uh, filled with glass, or something. Yeah. It is nice that glass is tougher than it used to be. I remember when it was, like, so fragile. Um, that's basically not worth using. Even if you wanted to armor cameras, you'll be better off just putting more cameras down. You see, nice full heavy armor wrap. Lots of poles. Lots of poles. So much pole. And also, I, I guess it's worth noting... Okay, they're just checking what kind of barrel length we need. And the answer is, just when in doubt, big barrel. So, um... Yep, just checking that the thing fires, and fires at a good rate. And yeah, so, about super cavitation turrets. I have not made uh, super cav turrets uh, in a long time. Well, actually, no, I made one the other day with the Komodo. Um, the battleship that I made for my Finest Hour playthrough. Which you should totally go watch, because it's great. Um, a lot of, unfortunately, there's a lot of cases of me um, complaining that the planes are too difficult to shoot down, but no worries. Uh, Jadog, the maker of the Finest Hour campaign, has already fixed that. So for newer versions of Finest Hour, it's all handy dandy and beautiful, so don't panic. Uh, what was I? Oh yeah, super firing turrets. Um, I'm not sure why I don't use them. I think it's just because I'm lazy. And with super fighting turrets, you need to design at least uh, 
uh, two different uh, turrets in order for them to work well, because you make um, you make one and then you make the one that's taller. People have told me that you can just elevate them, like you can just put some blocks under them. I have done that before and it never turns out well. I can't really explain why, it just, it just doesn't work for me. And now we're heading uh, on to uh, the second um, building session. And what you saw just now was uh, me measuring the height of this main turret because the secondary laser turrets are going to be just as tall. And um, in case you're wondering, we are on a different fortress now. We're on the laser test fortress. I have two different test fortresses. One of them is um, uh, one of them is for just uh, anything that uses ammunition. So that's APS, cram, missiles, and stuff. And the other is for energy weapons. So. You'll notice that there is a ridiculously high battery storage uh, on this fortress. And these lasers were kind of fun to make. So they're self-contained uh, turret lasers. So the whole laser system is on is in the turret itself. And I've made a video uh, on that as well. I love making these things. I think it's just because it feels like designing a cram turret or APS turret. It just feels good. I fully acknowledge, before anyone yells at me, that this is not the best way to make a laser. The whole point of a laser, or at the very least one of the main advantages, is that you don't have to stick the whole thing on the turret. And um, you're arguably, well, you're not, it's not really a good idea to do it really, because you're just, well, it's less volume efficient at the very least. Um, there are advantages, mainly it's just, uh, it's an easy way to, I don't know, make room for them as far as I'm, uh, I don't know. Again, this is a playstyle thing, I think. I am terrible at planning ahead, and so that means that um, uh, I need to do things ahead of time which force me to do things properly, if that makes sense. So, yeah, so um, turrets, for instance, I like having everything on the turret. I don't like having, uh, well, it's not that I don't like, I don't usually bother with things like uh, super firing turrets and stuff like that because you need to plan ahead a little bit more, and I am not good at that. Uh, that is one of the main uh, things to be good at um, when building big, and I freely admit I'm not good at it. Also, I use uh, one meter of uh, poles in there, I guess it's just for a bit of air gap filler, but um, yeah, not, not a super good idea to use one meter poles. Obviously, they don't have much health, and they're uh, block inefficient. And I, I think I deleted the munition warners off this thing and then added them straight back on. And so this laser is terrible, as you noticed. It um, did basically nothing. Uh, couldn't shoot down a duster and couldn't uh, shoot down the bombs either because um, the keen eyed of you would have spotted that this is a combination uh, offensive laser and seawiz. So it's going to shoot down uh, both uh, planes and munitions, which is uh, lovely. I'm, very, I'm getting very fond of uh, like double uh, purpose uh, sea whiz. Uh, so because like it's a great idea. It's like kind of cost efficient. When there's munitions coming in, it blows them up and saves your bacon. And when there's no munitions coming in, it uh, blows the other thing up and saves your bacon even more. Mmm, bacon. I don't eat bacon really. Um, but yeah, so yes, I am going to make a sea whiz tutorial at some point. Um, I'm bad at getting around to things I know, uh, but yeah, SeaWiz is great. SeaWiz is great. So this is me testing how well these things do in a battery, because, well, you've probably seen the finished product by now. It has a lot of these turrets. And the great news about lasers is that they scale in size uh, very well, and even if they're separate systems, it's just you have a bunch of laser systems together, better than just one. And as you can see, we're not really doing anything to this bastion. Uh, did manage to shoot down a cram shell, but this laser is not very uh, good. And now we're just testing against the Hornet's Nest. Can it uh, blow up any of those um, missiles? Not really. Not really blowing up any of them. Also, it's missing a lot. I think that uh, was a 4Q laser. And just messing with the settings on the SeaWiz. I am so grateful that the SeaWiz controller is... Um, is more intuitive now. It used to be so unintuitive. It used to be just filled with stuff. And what are you doing now, Bulldogs? I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the point where I'm just like, you know what, bugger it. Bugger this for a game of soldiers. We're going, we're going the 1Q, uh, 1Q style. 
Or am I? I think this might be a 2Q laser. Zap, 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 zap. There we go, so it goes zap, zap, zap. And yep, yep, yep. And as you can see here, um, uh, the, uh, the duster... <laughs> Um, actually, this thing I managed to shoot down the duster before I could activate god mode, so... Much better, much better. Look at the difference there. And actually managed to shoot, shoot down a few of the missiles that were being dropped. It's beautiful, beautiful. I am uh, getting very fond of, like, uh, somewhat slower firing lasers. Uh, because it means that every shot can take something off. Uh, which is uh, more useful than just damaging a whole bunch of blocks. And there we see, we're doing just one. And you can just see, with the one change we made, and didn't manage to shoot down those cram shells, um, uh, you can see just with that one change, uh, the little change we made, adding a little bit more storage, uh, like, and just changing uh, the number of Q switches, this went from a really crap laser to a actually somewhat decent laser. And when you have them in a battery like this, they actually do quite well. They can do stuff. And you can see the block confetti fly, and it's all lovely jubbly. And um, one of the advantages of having laser systems arrayed like this is redundancy. Each turret is entirely separate. If one of them gets blown up, um, like, it's not really a problem, because then the others are completely unaffected. Uh, unlike centralized laser, si laser systems in which... Um, if the central uh, system is destroyed, basically all lasers running off it get disabled. So I like to keep my laser system separate. Uh, it's not compulsory. Um, I have seen laser systems that um, have both offensive lasers and lambs run off them. So works just fine, honestly. Um, actually, what was it? I reviewed... I did a Most Wanted on the Deimos, um, Scarlet Dawn, uh, medium difficulty craft the other day, and it does that, and it seems to work just fine. It has enough pumps uh, to keep both uh, the lambs and the offensive laser running. And this is me just uh, messing with deco and stuff like that. And now, we get to the really fun bit. Whoops, Fortress was blowing up a little bit. Uh, we get to build the hull, and I always love this bit. Uh, once you've got your turret, uh, once you've got your two, well, two turrets, main and secondary, uh, I do, I actually do kind of, I don't know, I love and hate lasers. I like lasers more than particle cannons, but that's a story for another minute. So yeah, I always like building the hull for things, because it's like, it feels like sculpting. You can sculpt um, the hull around, uh, around your craft, and it's beautiful, and I like it. I like it, like it. Alright, so the plan here is there's a lot of poles in here, so just to reiterate again, if you are serious about uh, preventing a kinetic damage from ruining your life, um, wedges and slopes are better, but poles are more versatile in that uh, they are uh, evenly resistant to kinetic damage uh, no matter what angle you fire them at, so long as it's not the flat angle on either end. Uh, if it hits the curve, it will be reduced uh, by the exact amount that it is, which I forget. I think it's like, uh, what is it? I did, I'm not gonna go looking for my notes now, but it's r it's roughly in the ballpark of like 26% uh, kinetic reduction, which doesn't sound like much, but uh, especially in layers of poles like this, uh, that adds up, that adds up, uh, that adds up a fair amount and can make the difference uh, between a kinetic round ripping straight through your entire craft and it only, um, getting through a few layers of armor and like, you know, scratching your paint really heavily. So this is quite, um, it's, this is thick armor, but also kind of economic. You'll notice there's no heavy armor in the hull uh, itself. And we've got a wet space down there for stability. And also later, spoiler alert, I hide propellers in there, which is another thing that I'm getting more fond of doing is just having a wet space. And then you hide your propulsion down there, uh, which is, I don't know, it's like, it seems to work pretty well does unbalance your craft a little bit, but um, it unbalances it uh, in a way that is easy to compensate for with uh, PIDs and stuff. So now more poles, and this is another thing that I'm starting to be more conscientious of, is that if you're going to have really thick armor, you might as well have uniform thickness all the way around. It's just kind of, it's just kind of uh, worth it to do that, because um, I tend to find that uh, you don't always have fine control over uh, how your craft is aimed uh, at the target, that might be uh, a hint for me uh, to get better at making things that, well, steer well. 
Um, but also because, like, in the campaign especially, it's just, you know, stuff happens. You get caught off guard, your ships do stupid things, you might have to steer to avoid land and end up showing uh, a bad angle uh, at the enemy. And so, like, just having consistent armor belt all the way around uh, might actually be a good idea. And it seems to be working. Um, I'm trying to remember, what's the other thing? It might have been the Komodo I did this with as well. Uh, lots of blocks, lots of armor all the way around. And that seems to have paid off. Actually, no, I don't think I did it with the Komodo. Have I actually done this before with the Krant of Sharn? Anyway, it seemed it seems to be working because it means that from the as it uh, approaches the enemy, like uh, it is very resistant to damage, uh, which means it survives long enough to get in range. That's not so much an issue with this particular craft because it's got advanced cannons and lasers. It's perfectly fine at long range. With anything that uses cram cannons um, or similar uh, weaponry that's better at shorter ranges. Ironically, missiles account for that, um, unless you specifically design them to be long range. Uh, most missiles aren't really that much good beyond 2,000 meters or so, or at least I tend to find that. Um, but yeah, it's like, um, I'm not sure where that uh, line of thought was going, so let's just look at what I'm doing with the hull. This is very much how I usually do hulls, it's just I build them uh, from the bottom, uh, from the front and bottom up. Uh, I know, just my brain likes doing it that way. You'll notice that the deck is quite a few meters of alloy, and there's multiple reasons for that. Alloy is uh, uh, just really good for, well, if you really are insistent on making things float and cost isn't a particular problem, alloy is your best friend. Some people uh, are kind of snooty about alloy and they say it's a noob trap and you say you shouldn't use it because it costs as much as metal but isn't as durable, but it's not just durability that is a factor in determining what to use as building material. Uh, there's all kinds of things as well, and in particular case of Alloy, it's just so good at making things float. In particular, in my playthrough of Finest Hour, it's just amazing just um, sticking a layer of Alloy poles uh, inside something's hull. Uh, what a difference that can make, uh, both for the fact that uh, it helps it float better, but also uh, just it's, you know, it's basically just armor uh, that, you know, free air gap and, well, not quite free, but... Um, Useful, uh, improvised air gap, and kinetic defense, and flotation all at once. So, ally poles, in particular, can do all of that uh, at the same time. So, it's quite handy. Also, sticking alloy as an inner layer uh, of your armor is quite a good idea. You should not use it on the outside as your main armor, like your main belt armor. Uh, because, um, it, as it gets shot off, it uh, reduces your buoyancy on that side and you tip over. Uh, but, uh, as a kind of inner armor... It works quite well because it means that a whole bunch of heavy stuff uh, has already been shot off before it starts taking damage, which means that your buoyancy is less affected. Uh, it tends to work really well. Uh, my uh, my craft with thick alloy decks, they uh, I say that they tend to stay floating at the very least. Um, I don't really have craft that sink much uh, anymore, uh, but. Um, my craft do tend to sit very low in the water, and I'm not sure why. I think it's just because um, my turrets are very heavy. Um, I think also because I don't usually have much airspace uh, in my craft. Like, they tend to be quite compact. Uh, there's not a lot of just empty space in there that's just filled with air pumps and stuff like that. Uh, I do try and do that a little bit more uh, with this design. Uh, there's a kind of uh, inner citadel and there's a great big air gap. Uh, just making things uh, nice and, what do you call it, uh, nice and uh, floaty. Uh, but this thing still sits uh, quite low in the water, so, which isn't a bad thing, per se, uh, but it does mean that um, unless your craft is, um, I don't know, can keep itself at exactly the height it wants, either through uh, PID or just through the natural structure of it, it is more likely to sink. Um... But yeah, I never, like, I tend not to float high in the water a lot. It doesn't seem to... I tend to like making craft which are quite low slung. Uh, you've probably noticed by now. Uh, simply because it's, like, it's handy for having things just whiff over the top of you. And I think, um... I think that does, uh, that does come across quite a lot in my designs. The things, um... Especially cram shells, but also APS and missiles to a lesser extent. Um, when they're distracted. Um, they tend to go zoom uh, right over the top of anything that doesn't have um, much height to it. 
Also, like, just looking at this hull shape right now, this is a very kind of basic hull shape. Um, nothing, nothing amazing, nothing fancy. There's no fancy wave breaker on the front. The back doesn't uh, slope as the real ship would. Uh, because uh, I'm keeping, I'm following my own advice here and saying, okay, you want to build something big and you just want to get it built and get it functional. Um, keep it simple. And I like keeping things simple. Uh, I like simple, direct aesthetics. And yeah, like, uh, it's weird, actually. Um, uh, somebody did make the comment that this particular battleship looks uh, quite a bit uh, like a, what do you call it? A pre-Dreadnought battleship, and I totally see that. This the... Uh, the big pancake turrets, uh, all the guns on the side, the like the very low superstructure. Because remember, uh, tall superstructures uh, kind of were developed, I guess redeveloped actually, because like ironclads didn't really have particularly tall ones, um, I don't think, or at least not the ones I'm thinking of. And um, so you have um, the previous uh, equivalent to battleships, and like you know pre ironclad, the like the wooden. Uh, ships of the line and stuff like that. They had like tall masts, they had crow's nests, so you could see uh, the enemy coming in. Commandant, I'm mixing accents there. And then ironclads kind of uh, got rid of those because, you know, masts tend to get shot off. And then you have um, slightly later ones, you're getting into the dreadnought era and stuff like that. And then the masts and the, uh, the superstructure got taller again because uh, uh, guns got longer range. And so you would be uh, shooting at things that were only barely visible and uh, the bad the taller your superstructure the well the further you can see but also you can mount your radars and stuff nice and high and uh, I guess that's um, that's why it comes into play this thing that's another reason actually to have a tall superstructure which just occurred to me or I just reminded myself of it is that um, waves are a thing in from the depths and cameras and radar cannot see through water and and that includes waves, so having a nice tall radar uh, to poke above the waves uh, actually helps a lot, uh, particularly where is it? Like in the... in Nita, uh, the Onyx Watch territories have really lousy weather, which ironically kind of gives a... well not ironically, it makes sense, it kind of gives an advantage to Onyx Watch ships because they have uh, weapons which arc over waves, and also they're... Um, I think it's like, uh, yeah, they tend to hide behind them, uh, weirdly enough. Like, uh, they kind of, um, what do you call it? <laughs> wow, just distracted by me placing the wrong kind of block there. Wrong block, we need lead. Uh, because, yeah, lead keeled still works uh, very well. Um, oh boy, I rebuild this freaking bow so much. But yes, just be aware that weather is a thing, and from the depths, I'm not, still not entirely clear of whether it's daylight, daytime or nighttime affects how well your cameras work. I've never really noticed it making a difference. And if it does make a difference, I'll be... I was about to say I'd be annoyed, but I don't think I'd be that annoyed if it did. Because night combat is something to think about, I guess. So yeah, man, this game's complicated. You probably already know this, but... Freaking hell, this bow. Um, this is where planning ahead uh, comes in quite handy, because I uh, tried to have my cake, but also eat it, in that I wanted to make a kind of sexy bow uh, right here, you know, more ship-like, and it just was not working. I was trying to think about how to make it nice and smooth without resorting to decorations, and uh, it just was not working. Not working at all. Need a completely different hull shape there, dude. Completely different. You ain't gonna make this work. No, and see, you see there, it's like, no, I can't do it. No, none of the blocks work. Where is my more, more slopes mod got to? Uh, I should reinstall that mod. It's a, it's a fun mod. I want to make a canoe with 8 meter slopes. I'm getting into a canoe mood again. Apologies to all those people who are sick of canoes. I will never be sick of canoes. Alright, so here's where I just give up and just kind of go like, you know, bugger it, we've got slopes. Just make slopes. Just put a slope up the front. Just call it a day. And then we're just resuming making more... Uh, what do you call it? More bulkheads, I guess? Just um, little compartments. Um, 
I guess I like, yeah, I should get into the habit of making uh, more bulkheads, more compartments, because it does help it float its free flotation. Like, actually free uh, flotation, because alloy does cost materials, and uh, altitude props also cost materials. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a... It's a... Wow, my brain just turned off. It is uh, annoyingly hot uh, right now. It's humid. It's supposed to be autumn, but it's not. Ah, uh, yes, the ammo compartment. I always kind of... Um, I could have put more missiles on this thing, but I didn't want to make a missile cruiser in disguise again. That would have been... That would have been too much. That would have been really too much. Oh, boy. I do recall... Um, that's something I should try doing, actually. It's going to probably require a lot more pre-planning. Is that I should try and make a whole fleet uh, that doesn't use missiles at all. Uh, because missiles are a little bit... Okay, I was about to say they're too easy. There's no such thing as too easy in From the Depths. But um, they really do, like... Um, it's too simple and tempting to use them because they are just so simple. Like, you slap them down and there they are. And, um, yeah, I should really try and um, get in the habit of, like, mixing... Uh, APS and lasers a bit more and like I don't know just something with a super cavitation APS gun and a laser on it Incredibly versatile thing so Yeah, I think that's enough ammo for the moment But I think I add more anyway because this thing does have a missile or two on it When in doubt I always like to add large kinetic missiles onto things because it just um it kind of messes with enemy uh, active defenses. Oh, this is prefabbing demonstrated at its best. Oh, it would have taken me so long to build this freaking engine if I hadn't prefabbed it. Prefabbed it. So, this kind of engine is a very basic kind of uh, turbocharger engine. It is not the best. I freely admit that. Not the most efficient, but it's got a nice power between efficiency, compactness, and just power. Uh, mostly leaning towards efficiency and power. And, uh, yeah, like, I've got another one which is more efficient. Um, but uh, we've got the room for a bigger one, so we're using that. And here is uh, the secondary AI. And you'll notice I proceeded to shuffle along a bit because I want to put some uh, general purpose processing power on it. Because I have learned that if you have an entirely uh, secondary weapon system on your craft, it is a good idea to... Uh, there we go. I think I'm... What, what, did I just... Okay. I just renamed the AIs after patrons. Yay! Thank you, patrons. I love you. Um, yeah, so it's a good idea to uh, not only have weapons controlled by a different AI, if you want this entirely secondary... Um, sorry, entirely separate secondary weapons, but also have some, at the very least, trackers uh, that are controlled by that same AI, so they're all aiming at the same target. Uh, that way... Uh, you'll get to, uh, well, they'll shoot at the right thing. So, here we have the top on, and oh, alas, alas, the uh, the lasers are not firing. That's not good. So, have to check there. Yep, that's all connected, that's all correct. But that wasn't, and that's why you've got to test your designs uh, even while you're building them. So, now we save that, and we see uh, what happens when we have a battery of uh, 10... Uh, Self-contained lasers and two honking big guns. And just shooting at the tarpon a lot. And we're doing very well. Um, the tarpon is not easy to destroy. I think actually, like, um, what was it? It was like, I think the builder of the tarpon... Damn it, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot their name. I can look it up. They're a cool dude. Um, the builder of the tarpon and the stronghold... No, 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 no. They didn't have to negotiate, but yeah, I think um, the Tarpon and the Stronghold are actually kind of evenly matched uh, because all the crams on the Stronghold can't hit the Tarpon. It is very hard to hit with crams. Alright, so now we're moving on to Superstructure. So like I said, this Superstructure is not amazing. It is uh, just kind of um, functional and that's it. And uh, one thing I definitely wanted to do uh, with the, this particular build is put a hat on the turrets. Because I'm thinking, like, you know what? Uh, if you extend superstructure over the main guns, that is protecting the main guns a little bit more. It is extending the superstructure so you can put more stuff on it. And you're giving your turrets a hat. And in these troubled times, like, give, give hats to people. That's a nice thing to do. 
That was a weird direction to take that. Anyway, um, so I have some trouble uh, with this. I'm trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And thank goodness for the uh, turning off block connections, thinking of what I want to do. Do I want just a partial hat or a full hat? And the answer, of course, is no. We want a full hat. And yeah, because it looks so much better with the hat is full. Yes, there you go, Waterwise. Do it, do it. I'm cheering on my old self uh, to get the results that I already know is going to happen. Which is kind of hilarious, really. So we're going to go... Where are you going to go? You're going to go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's over there. And that's going to look very nice. Yes, 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 yes. And so the reason I'm not putting superstructure directly over the laser turrets is because they need to be able to aim straight up. Um, which is very important because they are both AA and SeaWiz. And anti-air, and, uh, I mean, um, aircraft sometimes fly over the top of you. And munitions sometimes drop on top of you as well. So that's, uh, that's important. And I love the way that hat looks. Looks like the turret's like... Eh, it's being squashed, but gently. It's it, it's getting its head. Uh, excuse me. It's getting its head patted, and that's adorable. So yeah, that's uh, that's lovely, lovely, lovely. And then we give the second one a hat. And oh, alas, a lack of day. It doesn't look quite as good. So prefab that yet again, and put that over there. And whoopsie daisy. There you can see I kind of panic. And then, alright, so we'll just extend this. I could probably put something in that um, spare deck space there. I have no idea what I'd put. Maybe I'd just put, um, I don't know. I have no idea. What could I put there? Suggest in the comments what I can use uh, that little patch of deck for. Maybe I can just stick some more anti-aircraft guns there or something. Some simple weapons. Uh, yeah, alrighty, so here we go. Just extending the superstructure out, like so. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And yes, prefab deco not decorations, prefab detection. They both start with D E. That's my excuse, I'm sticking it to it. So one of those is an armored camera system. It's just got a laser rangefinder and a 360 camera. And the other's a radar, because it helps to use both. Ah, here we go, naming these after patrons which I need to remember to do far more often because that's one of the perks, is that uh, you get random name drops and usually uh, that involves having AIs uh, named after you because um, you uh, patrons are kind of the brains of the operation, really. You go out, earn money, give me money so I can make videos like this. Actually, one of the things I really like about um, Patreon and I guess any kind of uh, crowdfunding type of thing is that... It's not actually that new a thing. It's very old, actually. Like, back in the day, uh, before capitalism ruined absolutely everything. I'm just... I'm kind of joking, by the way. Capitalism uh, works great when it's properly regulated. The problem is that often it isn't. But patronage is a very old thing. Be a patron of the arts. You give money to artists. I guess I count as an artist. Um, basically, just because you like what they do. Like, you don't get anything material from it, it's just you they get to keep making the thing that makes you happy. Which is wonderful, actually. It's a real sign, I think, of civilization. Um, that, like, it's not just uh, you only give money to things that directly um, like, benefit you in a material way. It's like, this art exists, and I feel better that this art exists, and therefore, um, I'm going to throw money at it so it can keep existing. I mean, really, that's, um, that's why I only, would, like, it's a funny thing, like, I've come to kind of understand that art is really not negotiable for human beings. Cave paintings. Cave pa oh yeah, there's a, there's a command post. But cave paintings. If you look back, uh, towards the rise of, uh, modern humans, or anatomically modern humans, so basically things that, uh, uh, were us, basically, when us, human beings, uh, first of all, Art also came into existence. It didn't exist before we did. So, and for some reason, we just have a need for it. Like, it's not negotiable. If there's no art in your life, if you're not 
like looking at art, experiencing art, consuming art, or creating art, like people who are not involved with art in any way, generally are not happy people, I find. Like, that's a bit of a generalization. Some people just don't work that way, but like, think about how art surrounds us and yet is somehow also underappreciated. It's sad. Artists um, make life worth living, and art is what makes life worth living, but at the same time, artists get a, uh, a tough go of it. Uh, because people, I think it's partially because, like, um, like, you know, people underestimate how difficult art is to make. Um, so people don't really, don't appreciate it as much as they should. Which is why art should be taught in schools. Like, you know, better than it is. I had art lessons at schools. They sucked. At school, bleh, they sucked. Alright, so anyway, getting back to what's actually happening on screen. Uh, making a little armored uh, pod. Uh, for a... what is that? I think that's an IR uh, infrared tracker uh, linked to the secondary AI, the laser AI, and so that it locks onto the same targets that the lasers do and provides them with accurate information. And yeah, so there we go, secondary laser in IR tracker hotspot, prefab there. Always prefab things you might be useful later. It is the from the depths equivalent of saving little pieces of string uh, that might be useful uh, later. And also we've got a little cute hard spots there, which is a horrible mishmash of alloy and metal. And I added more processing power there for some stupid... Oh, I think it's because I checked that and I was like, oh, wait a minute, we don't have enough. So now, hopefully, uh, we'll get to see that once these guys are flying overhead, uh, you'll see that the in both directions they're actually being way more accurate. So now we're locking on, locking on, and we're going zap, 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 zap. Zapping some of the bombs, but not all of them, because they're coming in at a steep angle. And we just fried an entire volley of planes. And given that, um, okay, and this is the other test. I'm very paranoid about ICBMs uh, these days. So when you have a battery of, what was it, uh, looks like about 14 lasers, because it's seven on each side. Um, yeah, so suicide craft are less of a problem for you. So that's great. That's awesome. That's lovely. That's beautiful. It makes me feel so good. Makes me feel great. Alrighty. So we, all right, here we go. So now we've got a nice little compartment right there. A little floaty compartment just to make sure. Really should swap these out for helium pumps uh, because helium pumps are more floaty. And this thing could float higher in the water. If you never know. Ah, and the lambs. Lambs, I'm not... I am... Decent with lambs. I'm not super competent with them. So uh, What have we got there? We've got a three to one ratio of pumps to storage for this lambs or not What the hell did you just do? Uh, get rid of that get rid of that. Yeah, there, 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 there lots of couplers because I always like to put extra AP on my lambs because I do want them to fire through smoke uh, so that if uh, my machine uh, uses smoke, or if it gets hit with smoke shells, it's just a little bit of storage there on the end. It's not giant by lamb standards. I tend to end up with undersized lambs uh, in most of my craft uh, because simply because I don't plan ahead with them. I'm not like, okay, what kind of lamb system do I want? How much room do I need for it? And uh, the answer is, is that you usually need more room than you think. So in this particular case, um, yeah, I don't think that Surge Protector placement was very good. EMP is slightly de is very powerful at the moment, particularly in Alpha Test. I hope it's changed because um, one long-term problem that From the Depths has is that uh, making smaller craft is generally not... It's not the meta thing to do, both in uh, campaign and in tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, uh, smaller vehicles, and actually especially medium-sized vehicles, uh, are less good than just having one giant vehicle that can kind of do everything. Um, which is unfortunate, because, like, it would be nice to balance it out a bit so that small vehicles are more viable. Like, you could swarm a battleship or something like that. You can! Um, but, um, if the battleship is, for instance, armed with a giant battery of lasers, and small craft had to be quite vulnerable to lasers, simply because, you know, even if they have smoke or something like that, uh, Lasers with a high AP will just still strip blocks off them. And EMP especially is like, um... Even large craft these days are very vulnerable to EMP simply because of the way that heavy armor has been changed. 
Uh, and also because of the way that stone and wood has been changed. Um, EMP goes much more easily through uh, stone and wood now, so it's not that good EMP protection, really. Um, should really, uh, what you should be uh, trying to do, I think, is using surge protectors where only one of the six sides is touching a block, and um, kind of uh, have them isolated away from other uh, components, and so they pull EMP surges towards them, and like they just actually save your bacon a lot. So, yeah, it's like it's hard, man. It's hard, man. So, could fill. Actually, one of the great things about having a wet space down there is that you could just fill that with surge protectors. Um, I say fill, maybe not that much. They are expensive. Man, I just have a lot of them down there, so they pull stuff away uh, from uh, your vital bits in the center of the craft. So. There's the very important thing, check the fire within smoke button. And now we're just turning everything off, and of course we've got to test against the swarm of bees. I mean the horn's nest. So this lamp's just absolutely fine, dabby dozy. And um, turning on the uh, secondary lasers. And then turning on the main guns just for giggles, because I hate the horn's nest and I love killing it. I mean, I love to hate it. Which is not diff which is different from just hating it. Um, the Twin Guard are, I think, the most annoying craft in the entire game. I mean, faction in the entire game. But yeah, I still like them, kind of. And so now we're testing against the Palisade, and uh, this uh, setup is actually doing kind of well. It took out most of that volley, which is not an easy volley to shoot down. But um, yeah, what do I end up doing in here? Ah, we need we need more fuel. We need more fuel. We need it. We need more fuel. We need more fuel. Armor the AI box with fuel. What could possibly go wrong? If fuel is patched to be explosive, I think I might cry because I'm so used to it not being a problem. Actually, fire might get added to the game. Actually, no, 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 no. It might not be. I have no idea, really. But yeah, um, that'll be good by a deep water guard and fuel tanks if it is. Alright, so here's where I try and get cute with propellers, just hiding big propellers inside the hull itself. And it doesn't really work, so I end up doing something completely different, Monty Python style. And yeah, I end up just sticking a whole bunch of small propellers in the wet space down here. And I kind of flub it and then have to do it all over again. Uh, but speaking of ducts, uh, there's no ducts on screen right now. There's a proposal um, from the devs. Uh, to make them leak, so they're not airtight, which makes perfect sense to me, so I reckon they should do it. Uh, ducts are too convenient otherwise. It is actually a little bit weird that propellers, like even the circular ones, can basically act as like airtight things. But yeah. Sorry, I am never getting enough sleep. Alright, so the whole idea with this little thing down there, and the reason I'm sticking wood poles in there is it's a kind of measuring system. Um, just to kind of, like, because uh, propellers need 8 meters of uh, clearance behind them in order to uh, do their thing. And they just, yeah, me doing that is thinking, is like, okay, can I do that? And the answer is, I cannot do that and should not do that. And right here is the point where I go like, ah, bugger it, this is too hard. This is too hard. I'm just gonna do something else. And so I end up uh, sticking these propellers in uh, from the middle uh, rather than uh, from uh, the, uh, what do you call it? From the back. So, going, counting it down, checking the clearance, and hitting the fill tool. Lots and lots of propellers. This is a. Uh, yeah, it's like, this is great redundancy actually. The, you'll need to blow off the entire underside of the ship in order to. Uh, completely immobilize this thing. And right there I'm trimming out the propellers which um, don't have clearance. And then one more, trim out the ones that don't have clearance. And then just checking, 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 save, 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 multiple times. Add a behavior. And let's see, double broadside, start broadside below 3000 meters because we're good at that. 75 meters and now we're seeing uh, just to check in all those usual options, and it's in reverse, which is not what we want. Uh, because I forgot to put rudders on, so putting some rudders on there. And later, you will see me replace these simple rudders um, 
uh, with uh, custom runners because the game got updated uh, like during the recording of this whole build so um, yeah we're going along 30 meters per second that's what happens when you use lots of little propellers the thing has a bit of a jaunty lean on it so I think we're just lowering the rudders a little bit and that should fix it because you do have to get them lined up and center dry that looks a lot better and beautiful now let's uh, test against the palisade uh, this is a test I did just to see uh, how well it deals with missiles when it's moving because uh, moving makes a big difference um, with active defenses um, it means that um, well you can see there it um, I think yeah just one missile managed to hit it and no others and that's just because it was moving along uh, quite a lot and I think it got hit by more missiles uh, just then because the lambs wasn't fully charged I couldn't tell because there was God mode on so here we got this thing just going dugga 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 and what I like about this craft and oh moving on moving on all right so this is the point where a lot of I'm sorry I'm so sorry a lot of footage was lost um, I think at least half an hour's worth because this is where missiles and uh, uh, what was it it was torpedoes it was counter torpedoes and actually is this the counter torpedoes no no no, no. this is the torpedo section um, yeah I think I added counter torpedoes and uh, missiles and stuff and this appears to be adding to torpedoes. I don't know what happened to that footage. And I hope I didn't, like, label uh, these things wrong, because otherwise that's going to be really weird. I've already rendered this whole damn thing, by the way. Um, at least the raw footage. It took 10 hours, so <laughs> I don't want to do it again. So if it's out of order, um, I'm just going to have to live with it. And you're just going to have to live with me living with it, because it's okay. We know the end result anyway. There's an ambulance helicopter outside. Hooray, ambulance helicopter. So, right here we got our torpedoes. And the reason I'm using rail gantries, uh, by the way, um, is because it allows you to get an extra length of... Uh, you stick an extra com missile component in there, uh, which means it can be a little longer. You can stick an extra component in. It's very useful, very handy-dandy. And, um... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just going to say yeah instead of saying anything else. Um, so yeah, also durability isn't a problem if you're hiding your uh, missiles inside like this. So that should be alright, I hope. I didn't put all that armor on the outside of this thing for decoration. That should do the main job. But yeah, so it's got a whole bunch of counter torpedoes. It's got a whole bunch of things. And aha! This is something that's always good to do ahead of time is set weapon groups. Um, I used to never do this, but... Um, uh, but, uh, oh yeah, and once again, I'm just, um, <laughs> replacing all the time. I think I do that like four times uh, during this whole build. Is just go there, and just do that, and just do that, just, um, so we can, uh, so we can just, what do you call it? So we can keep the azimuth restrictions on them. So there's weapon group two. There we go, and this weapon group three, big kinetic missiles. I'm so annoyed that um, uh, that I lost some footage because, like, I would have loved to explain the idea behind, the, like, the counter torpedoes and all that. Uh, this thing doesn't really use, um, what do we call it? Uh, it doesn't really use um, uh, decoys. And also, what I just it did there was I gave uh, both of the, the torpedoes slightly different staggered fire. Uh, what was that? Alright, so that's just testing the torpedoes to make sure they do uh, the job they're supposed to in testing the uh, how well they're doing. And that's a lot of torpedoes, actually. Uh, this thing with super cavitation uh, shells and uh, a torpedo barrage like that means they actually do pretty well. And there is a lot of counter torpedoes right there. Lots and lots of them, because... You kind of need them for a big thing like this, because decoys don't work very well. It's just lots of torpedoes just going kablooey. Kablooey, kablami, kaboozy. I'm trying to remember if, like, um, it was, if it was in the lost footage. And now that's turning the guns on, and they just do a real number on things as well. And I think, yep, APN gun. Alright, so, one thing with torpedoes is prediction guidance does tend to work better. But if you use APN guidance, you can skip out on using a ballast tank with them because APN is strong enough 
uh, to um, basically push the torpedo to where it needs to go. There's just some extra material storage, uh, just so we can store more materials. Department of Redundancy Department. Uh, what did we just put down there? Ah, repair bots. Alright, so probably not too much. And turn that off. What are you doing now? So this thing is like 1.4 million materials now. Slightly expensive. Ah, yes! We're painting! We're painting! Oh, I love the paint tool. The paint tool is my best friend, apart from my actual best friend. And I'll remember their name in a minute. Don't rush me. So, yeah. Oh, I forget what beautiful, beautiful soul told me about the paint tool. But my goodness. Uh, it has saved me so much time and made painting things so much more fun and quick and efficient. Um, basically, more fun and efficient because it's so much more quick. Um, what was I doing there? I think I was getting a cup of tea or something and I forgot to pause the recording. So, yeah, that was a long stare. And times that time by four. Maybe I was talking to somebody. I actually do like how um, uh, when I'm recording stuff like without commentary, um, to commentate on it later, I can just leave my door open and like, um, you know, there's less pressure, it's more relaxing, my flatmate can swan in and like bring me cups of tea and stuff. And before anyone is wondering, like my flatmate is my sister and I do make lots of cups of tea for her as well. We're actually really nice to each other in many ways. <sighs> She is my biggest critic, though, I have to say. But anyway, uh, da, 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 da. red paint, rust-proof paint. I learned the other day what kind of that paint is called and why it's rust-proof, and then I forgot. So, there you go. So, that's just doing some camo, because I love camo. It's nice and short, and just change the paint so it doesn't have camo. Um, yeah, this is uh, basically done, really. Um, I think there's a, one more test here. Yeah, I tested against, yeah, the Stronghold, which is a nice test uh, for a giant ship. So, didn't quite manage to take out that whole cram volley, but um, this is mainly to test uh, whether it can take out all the torpedoes. Uh, because, also testing the armor in case it doesn't quite manage that. Uh, because the Stronghold has very big torpedoes and they're very hard to destroy. Um, so, we're doing quite well, uh, actually. Zap, 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 zap. Uh, probably should go and make the lands bigger. So once we get some distance and start moving, uh, we do much better at destroying those torpedoes. Uh, especially when they bunch up like that, because uh, interceptors have a, have a radius to them. So in this particular case, um, this unnamed battleship, uh, the Bigasaurus Rex, I'm just going to be calling it. I think I, think I am just going to call it that. Uh, by the time uh, you're seeing this, I probably would have named it and put it on the workshop. And the link to it will be in the description. And if it's not, uh, please annoy me until I put it there. In the comment section. I will greatly appreciate it. Thank you very please. So yeah, this is just uh, the test, so to speak. It's always fun testing a thing that's almost completed. So there we go. I'm trying to remember, did I put missile interceptors on that thing? I don't think I did. I possibly should. No, wait, I did. Oh yeah, that's another thing that got missed. Damn it! It's like almost a whole recording session that got uh, left out. And so here's the final thing I do. It's just um, since uh, custom rudders have been made somewhat better, uh, I add some there, and I'm gonna add some more. What are you doing, past border wise? You gotta do stuff. You gotta do better stuff than what you're doing. Go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Is she turning? She's turning, but she could turn even more. So, ah, right. I guess you're satisfied with the amount it's turning. No, you're not. You want even more turning. Well, by gum, who am I to tell you no? So, and it's heavy armor ducts there just uh, for a little bit of extra protection so it doesn't get shot. And yes, remember to tell the thing that it is a ship because otherwise it would have no idea of knowing. And that's pretty much it by the looks of it so yeah that was this was a very fun build it's the first time i've done such a big build specifically for a tutorial and uh, i used barely any of the footage in that tutorial but that's how it goes really that's a very it's a very common trend in making videos like from just youtube stuff to all the way to film you don't use end up using a lot of the footage and it worked out very well in the end so 
Sorry for somehow losing the uh, footage for the torpedo interceptors, the missile interceptors, the torpedoes and... Well, not the torpedoes, and the missiles. But, um, yeah, you feel like, this thing will be on the workshop. Please tear my design to bits. Figuratively and literally. I would love that. So, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.